Hello, this is Scott. Welcome to my YouTube series on advanced analytics and data science. Today we're talking about uh, simple forecasting methods in R. If you joined me before, you know I covered one of two themes. The first theme is the types of problems um, and industries that data science can help you with, and the second is a hands-on demonstration. And so this is going to be the latter. Um, these demonstrations cover things from R, Statistica, Spotfire, Python, um, Streambase, etc. But this one is going to be in R, uh, and I'm going to cover hands-on application of classical decomposition. Last time, if you joined me, we're, we talked about moving averages, um, and the time before that, which is much related to what we're talking about today, was on the components of time series. And so, really, if you want to get the most out of today, please review R07. Um, and it'll fit right. Today's uh, conversation will fit right in. And then, just to note, next time we'll be talking about X11 decomposition, which is cool stuff. In fact, even sounds cool, right? X11. So, with that, let's talk about um, classical decomposition. What we're going to do is we are going to break down a time series. We'll, we'll talk about, we'll actually illustrate this in. R in just a second, but essentially four um, activities, estimate the trend, um, and then detrend, estimate the seasonal components, and then calculate the remainder. If we're talking about additive decomposition, then everything, is, as I said, is, is pretty much a plus or minus operator. So if I start, I'm going to start with calculating the trend. Um, y, it's actually Y hat sub T, and um, PowerPoint doesn't uh, offer a lot of uh, great formula calculations in it. So uh, T sub T, and then we're going to calculate the detrended series by taking the original series and subtracting that estimated trend out. Um, we can also estimate the seasonal components, S hat sub T. And then we can calculate the remainder, which is essentially just taking the original series, y sub t minus t hat sub t minus s hat sub t, and that gives you the remainder. This will all become very apparent in, in just a second when we start to get into R and we look at the graphs um, of these things. The only difference in multiplicative is the actual calculation. Instead of when we do our detrended series here, we are going to take the original series and divide it by the trended, um, the, the trend estimate. And for the remainder, we are going to take the original and divide by the product of the trend and the seasonal component. Okay? So that is that. Let's look at see what it what actually looks like in practice. Okay, so this is my R script. Oops, let me back out for a minute. Okay, so this is my R script. Very simple. This is going to be a short uh, demonstration, obviously. So I'm using, again, this uh, library, uh, FPP2 um, from Heinemann, Dr. Heinemann, which I've shown before in, in other videos. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this for um, calculation of the auto plot and using this decompose, um, and, and I'm going to do this with a multiplicative. This could be additive, right? Um, but I'm going to use the multiplicative option uh, here, and I'm going to show you how I can do this real easily um, in one step. So if I run that, um, after I load my library, I get the original series here. This is the actual data here from the electrical um, equipment. And then the seasonal component here, as well as the trend component here, and then the remainder. So the remainder is the original minus the C, uh, well, actually, this is multiplicative, right? So this this is the original divided by the product of the seasonal and the trend to get the remainder. Um, and there are different kinds of options um, as well here um, within this package. And uh, we'll be uh, talking about a lot of the different ways to, to use 
uh, this, this particular library, okay? So, so, I mean, one of the things that I could do, if, I mean, obviously, is to help, um, just real quickly, since this is going to be short enough as it is, and then I see here um, the FPP2 package, um, also the forecast package um, with some of the uh, pieces to it. But again, hopefully as we move forward and where it makes sense in context, we'll be illustrating uh, more of the capability of, of this function, all right? So with that, uh, we'll close this time again. Next time we'll be talking about um, X11 decomposition. I hope to see you then.